All right, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Sorry, I'm gonna move my mic a bit. Hope that wasn't too loud. Okay, we're back to investigating. Phew, we made it back in one piece, just. To be perfectly honest, I thought we were finished there for a while. Oh, I know, what a lot of close shaves. There's so many carriages on the streets of London, you were very nearly flattened several times. What up, I'm here early today. Hey, Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday. Gosh, it's already Wednesday. And it's February, holy crap. And yesterday was Lunar New Year. Oh man, I really wanted to stream yesterday, but I was so exhausted for some strange reason. I just literally passed out. I don't know why I'm so tired. Yeah. I'm back now! Uh, let's keep going. Oh no, I didn't mean that. Yes, I know. It was some marvelous stuff. Defense, Naruhoto-san. It really was. I was in awe of you. Oh, um, thank you. Oh, my desk isn't here yet because we're in the past. And now that your fervent exploits have won us some more precious investigation time, Let's see if we can't find some new clues for court tomorrow. Yes, let's do that. Is everything alright? I suppose. I still can't quite believe it. That's all. And I'm here in England, working as a lawyer, I mean. In the old Bailey, no less. Believe it! The truth is, it shouldn't be me, should it? It should be him standing in my shoes! Asuki Kazuma! It's Kasuma Sama's wish that you follow him to Great Britain and work alongside him. Yes, I mean, I never had the chance to ask him exactly why, but he clearly had a plan. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. Doing wonderfully, naruhoto san No doubt that Kasuma Sama would say exactly the same if he were here with us. Thank you, susoto san Thank you. Oh, I forgot to change their outfits! Aww, man! Oh man, um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna save. I wanted to change their outfits for this time around. Watch stream, no! Uh, back to title. I already saved, so whatever. Saved. Did I not save? If I didn't save, then I'll just blast through that dialogue. Okay, um, special contents, I think it was. I'm so sleepy, oh my gosh. Taylor, yes. <laughs> wow. Turns out you haven't saved since the beginning of the trial, no. <laughs> Clearly, clearly I have saved. Ugh. There we go. Aw, so cute! It's got Iris's little design on her goggles. Aw. Um, am I supposed to converse? Today's trial. It was quite a shock earlier today, wasn't it? And the victim himself turned up in court and took the stand. I know. Not only that, then finding out that he actually is a bare-faced gas thief as well. Yes, that was certainly a surprise to us all. For a while, it seemed as though everyone had quite forgotten about Sosuke-san poisoning the tea. Careful of your phrasing, Susuke-san. He didn't poison anything. There's more to this Mr. Shamspear than we yet know, I'm sure of it. Mr. Shamspear certainly wasn't the noble, upstanding man everyone thought he was at first. What's become of him, actually? I was told that he'd be returning to the hospital ward where he was receiving treatments. Oh, which one is that? <laughs> she pulled her book out of nowhere. Usually it would be her kimono sleeve, but she doesn't have that now. Let me see. Ah yes, he's at St. Bartholomew's, or Barnes as Londoners call it. We know that place, don't we? Yes, we visited Miss Green there yesterday. It's the same hospital to which she was taken. Ah yes, after Sosuke-san stabbed her in the back. Do be careful of your phrasing, Naruhoto-san. He didn't stab anyone. 
Absolutely both though, Sosaki san and Apology. I don't know why, but all I'm thinking about is that one um, Game Grump Stroke. Which one? They have so many. Name Bartholomew's. Yes, we should probably visit the hospital later. Launched a Sonic Cannon. What the f is a Sonic Cannon? What? I don't remember that one. Which Sonic game is that from? Because I've been just watching their compilation videos. I was watching their Undertale Genocide run, their, um... Their, uh, Sleepy Moments, their, uh, WTF Moments, the best of Breath of the Wild, best of Super Mario RPG. I just freaking love Super Mario RPG. Any videos re pertaining to that? So good. Might have been their Sonic Adventure. Okay, I don't think I watched Sonic Adventure. I watched Sonic and the Black Knight and Sonic Colors and Sonic Unleashed recently. But not Adventure. So, we know that Sosa Kazan took tea to the victim on the night in question. But as he isn't the culprit, then obviously. Oh yeah, and Dan's back! Because I saw that they did another Danganronpa episode, and I was just like, No, I can't watch this! <laughs> yes, the poison surely wasn't in the tea. But if that's the case, how on earth did the poison get into Mr. Shamspear's body? The envelope! Sure we'll find a clue at the scene. Must be something in Mr. Shamspear's room that will help solve the mystery. Well, naturally, Scotland Yard detectives have been over the place already. But it couldn't hurt for us to have another look around, I think. Definitely. I'm desperate to know the outcome of the investigation into the tea uh, left in the bar of soap. Well, if we run into Inspector Gregson, we could ask him about that. Asuma. Asuma Asogi. Best friend I ever had. Lawyer with such promise. You really saved my bacon in that horrible incident just before we left Japan. Kazuma! I can so picture him now. Looking so fierce and determined in court. Wait, this isn't his, this isn't his theme song. Is it? No, it's not. So pretty. And then after the trial, that crazy idea he came up with. A stowaway? Yes, you can fit inside my trunk if you curl up small enough, I'm sure. No, no. Ah, oh, you're so beautiful. Kazuma. What you tell me why? Why go to these lengths so that I can accompany you to Great Britain? Oh, it's been out of my mind ever since we got through that trial. Really got to go into law. Be a defense lawyer. You've got a natural talent for it. Believe me. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. I've never even thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, I can't force you, obviously. You'll have to decide for yourself. But anyway, London is the cultural capital of the world. The city at the forefront of everything. I can't hurt for you to see it with your own eyes. Oh, excuse me. No, that's true. I suppose, though. Did his headband, like, things get smaller? I feel like they used to be longer. You'd have become a lawyer on Monday. Monday what? Oh, no. Never mind. Huh? Nanahuro-san? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about Kazuma. Yes. He's forever in my thoughts, too. Never mentioned the length of a man's headband things. <laughs> Why not? He changed the Japanese judicial system for the better. That was his dream. And that's why he so desperately wanted to come to Great Britain to study, of course. Yes, that's right. But... Yes? I do wonder if his true intentions lay elsewhere sometimes. I don't know. The thought just takes hold of me every now and then, that's all. Cosmo's true intentions! And sometimes it's not about the length, it's about the girth. Ha 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 ha. Naruhura-san, what do you mean by Kazuma-sama's true intentions? Whoa! Whoa, my arms! Whoa! I mean this. Men are sensitive about their length sometimes. It's not about the length, it's about how you use it! It's katana. Never expected to inherit the sword after Kazuma passed away, of course. 
No, I know. It was because I asked you to take it. I never knew you had arms. I thought you were just a floating head. I know, right? When I have it at my side in court, I feel as though it gives me courage. Yes. Actually, the night before he died, he told me a little about the sword. Adama? That's right. The right sword has been passed down to generations of the Asuki clan. Oh, you're so handsome. Never this man's sword is his soul, Yunosuke. I can't be parted from a katana. Anma guides me. I really believe that. There's name compels its will to slice evil in two. Not that you would need much compelling. On that subject. There's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. Something you have to do? Yes. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Of, of course I'll! Whatever it is, I'll see it through DM with you! This is some great AVA. I know, right? Thank you. But I, it's only silly voices because it's a flashback scene. You wouldn't let me down. What if when I play Danganronpa, that's just how I'm going to do everyone's voices? It's like, the girls' voices will be super high-pitched and the guys' voices will just be like... <laughs> I can't wait to start playing it. I mean, I can. I'm kind. I'm still kind of like iffy about it. Like, I feel like it's still gonna be bloody and gory and gross. But I do want to try it? I would riot. I'm so Maybe I'll just do it occasionally when I'm feeling super tired, like right now. Oof. It's not that bad. <laughs> as long as it's, it's not like realistic blood. Because I feel like sometimes 999 had, like, like realistic violence, but, like, the blood wasn't red. Well, some people's was. Not all people's. That, and that was kind of creepy, too. Slight spoiler, but the blood is pink. Okay. And if it's, like, stylized, then I can handle it. But if it looks too realistic, then mm, I... Oof. What do you mean by something very important that I have to do? I had hoped that answer to that question would be become apparent when we arrived here, but... As yet, I have not found a single clue. Z. Looking at Susato's outfit now... Like... Ah, oh, damn it, she disappears. Never mind. Wait. I think there's something to do with this shovel. Perhaps we should put the spade away somewhere. Not a spade, Naruhoto-san. It's a shovel. No, shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. No, spades are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a shovel. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? You're so right, Naruhoto-san. We mustn't quarrel over such trifles. On reflection, then, I think I'll leave the spade here where it is. Yes, I think that's for the best. We may need a shovel when we're working in the garden. I think it's... A spade. Whatever. Uh, now we will move. That's a spade, right? I think it's a spade. Where are we going? Oh yeah, we're going to... Let's go to Shamsphere's room. Because we still gotta investigate, and then maybe we'll go to the hospital. <gasps> 22nd February! It, it occurred to me that the 22nd of February this year will be on a Tuesday. So it'll be Tuesday 2-2-2-2-0-2-2. It's just going to be twos all day. It'll be awesome. It will truly be a Tuesday. Ha ha ha. I'm so sleepy. Oh, hello again, Inspector Gregson. What are you doing here? Um, well, we were hoping to have another look around, actually. The lawyer representing the defendant has a right to examine the scene, as I'm sure you're aware. That's my birthday? Is it really? Your birthday's February 22nd? Dude. Then it's gonna be the most awesome birthday. 
Two, 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 two on a Tuesday. That's crazy, dude. Woo! I'll definitely stream that day. Ugh. Yeah, I go to school. Oh, yes. One other thing. This hope on the ledge outside the window. Did you find it? With the tea in it? I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, we found it, alright. There was a small amount of tea in it, as you said. I knew it! What the identification section? Oh, I can. Uh, I'm so tired. Identification section at the yard now. They're looking into it. The results should be available later today. That's wonderful news. Thank you. Pretty impressive performance in court this morning. Sorry? Nothing. Forget it. Make sure you don't disturb anything in here. Examine. Excite. Maybe on on Tuesday I'll play observation duty. I don't want to start gun gun because then I won't stop. Maybe, or maybe more Jackbox on Tuesday. We shall see. Ah, the ill-fated teacups from which the two men drank on the ill-fated night. Play Omori, but then I have to buy it! No, I don't want to buy another game that I won't finish. I still have so many games. During their heated literary debate, yes. Who's stronger, Romeo or Juliet? It sounds like it was quite a discussion. Now I think of it, I'm sure that the two lovers in the play ended their lives with poison. That's fiction, Mr. Sato. Let's hope it stays that way. It's a short game. Why can I not examine the... the puddle? You ran out of change. You wouldn't even have any light, let alone heat. For the needy, London's winters can be very harsh. That's true, but if you think about it... Even the wealthy would find themselves freezing if they ran out of small change. London's winters can be very harsh for the forgetful, too, then. Frankly, I'm starting to wonder if Susato-san and I are going to make it to spring. It's true. We don't even have a meter at Baker Street, let alone a gas stove. What? 20 hours at most. But think about it. I stream for, like, what, two hours? Every stream? So that's gonna be, like, ten sessions, dude. Okay, let me look up what almost. Ah, uh, man, man, I do like Omo cats, but I don't have the time. Look how the dark stain on the floor is underneath the meter there. Yes, from all the water dripping out after ice coins melted as you established in court this morning. It's a very large and obvious stain, isn't it? Mr. Shamster must have used an awful lot of ice coins, I suppose. It was an ingenious idea, I'll give him that. Why didn't he just recycle the water and just use whatever dripped out to... to whatever... make new coins? Stupid. Ten sessions streaming three times a week is three weeks of Omori. Uh, I, st I still have so many games to play. <laughs> Sun never shines in this room thanks to that dep depressing bricked up window. Yet, yeah, with enough determination, you can always remove the bricks to set some soap outside, can't you? That sounds like a very wise life lesson, Mr. Sato. Only if you plan to follow a life of crime, Mr. Naruhodo. So we can't look outside the window again, can we talk to Gregson? Are you looking for a new clues, Inspector? Oh, Lord Van Zeke's orders, yeah. Don't come back till you've got something for me, he says. The game is so amazing, I will pay for it. <laughs> ah! Oh dear, poor you. Yeah, poor me, because we've already searched every bleeding nook and cranny in this place. I don't know what he expects, to be honest. Thank goodness for warm chips, that all is all I can say. Gift you three subs right now. <laughs> ah! Well, at least he's honest. Okay, I guess there isn't much we can see here. 
Oh, you did the window. Oh, the soap. It turns out that Mr. Shamsbury wasn't eating soap at all. That's right. The mystery of why he had it on a plate whilst holding a fork in his hand is solved. Yes, to prize his latest coin, ice coin, out of its mold. And in the process, he accidentally broke the bar of soap in two. It certainly was hard to imagine, let alone deduce. Deducing! 30k reviews on Steam, overwhelmingly positive. I know, but it's another game which will push back all of my other games, and I don't want to do that anymore. Or board, no. What number is greater than one but less than two? There's a lot! <laughs> if you're going by decimals, like 1.1, 1.11, 1.1. 111. What if I promise a kiss? No, I, I have so many other games to play. So many! That I actually already bought. <laughs> okay, so I will go to Miss Green's hospital bed. Also, hi, still snowy here. Yeah, how many how many inches of snow did you get? I heard it snowed a lot, but then it, like, practically melted the next day. Or did I hear it wrong? But I heard it snowing a lot. What do you suppose is happening? It sounds like some sort of disturbance. Yes, I hear angry voices. <gasps> you don't angry, oh, ample lady. Verily, thou art mistaken. Mistaken my foot! You were looking! You were looking at my painting! The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. You're about 12 inches and it's still out there. Dang. I miss snow, but I don't really miss it. I, mi I like it when it's like falling and no one's outside because it's falling so much. Yeah, and then you just occasionally hear the snow plow driving by, clearing up the streets. But then when it turns icy and slushy, is that's when not cool. Also, hey Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday. Happy February. Happy Groundhog's Day! It's Groundhog's Day. Did the Groundhog see his shadow? Are we getting more winter or more spring? Doesn't matter anyway. Global warming. Ha ha ha. Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday. Happy Groundhog's Day. Hope, you're, hope your guys' week has been going well so far. I heard he didn't see it. Oh, so we'll get warmer weather soon. Nice. Was foul indeed the poison that moustached villain gave it me? Forgive me, lady. I wish that you died for that poison. God of mercy, ample lady. What thou seest, I have vigor still. Behold my sham spear dance. <laughs> you weirdo. This looks rather ominous, doesn't it? Oh my gosh! This guy is so creepy. Oh, get away from me. Ah, Lei, tis a lawyer from the land where it's rise at the sun. How now? Brown cow. Groundhog Day, good movie. I finally watched it, like, three years ago? Groundhog Day is the one with, um, Ma Matthew Broderick, right? The Ferris- no, that's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, no. <gasps> Wait, did I watch Groundhog's Day? I thought I did. Groundhog. Day movie. No, I did not watch Groundhog Day because it has Bill Murray in it. And Bill Murray creeps me out. We've had this conversation 20 times, you know? No, don't, don't, don't do this to me, Smooth. I'm so tired, I will believe you for real. My mind is like... I'm so tired. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! I'm trying to convince JT to play one more need now. <laughs> ah! Ah, oh, my throat. What are you doing here, Mr. Shamspear? Mary, I do believe I returned onto another world. It's looking, that's what he was doing! Looking at my terrible work! Eastern fellow, so darkly clad. Hey, thy work in court this morning was wonderful. I do applaud thee. 
Oh, well, thank you. You give, you give me your PSP? No, I will never give away any of my consoles. Handheld or, you know, regular ones. Oh, gosh, he bent his staff. But... That doesn't mean things will go so wonderfully for you tomorrow, does it? Now I know why he freaks me out so much. I could see so much of his teeth. That's why it's weird. Anon! Exunt! What? No. Mr. Shamster might technically be the victim in this case. There's definitely a lot more to it than that. It's very hard to pin the man down. I'm so sorry. I'm such an awful person. Ah, Miss Green. Is everything alright? Oh, yes. I mean, don't worry about me. You're about to discharge me, so I must get ready to leave now. Oh, I see. We're delighted that you'll soon be well enough to go home, Miss Green. Oh dear, too kind. I don't deserve it. Where's the painting you were working on? The heck? Hi, talk to me more. So, are you feeling more like yourself today, Miss Green? I am. Thank you. I mean, people do recover from ordeals like this, don't they? People like me. Well, yes. It really was an ordeal, wasn't it? As far as I was concerned, I was just walking along in the snow one evening, minding my own business. And then, completely out of the blue, I was struck in the back by a knife, lapsed unconscious for days. Of course, I finally woke up again yesterday. The whole business had been cleared up already. What a terrible week it's been for you. No, I'm sure I'm very lucky, really. I'll look back on this fondly. Why does she have a key around her neck? I'm pretty sure that's gonna be important. Later. Bill Murray wouldn't approve. I don't care, I don't like Bill Murray. For some reason, he just creeps me out. There's something that's a little, like, I don't know, gross about him. What's a PSP? A PSP is a PlayStation Portable. I love that thing. Mine is... Yeah, I talked to you guys about this before. Mine's sparkly blue. Sparkly light blue. Freaking love it. So great. Billy Shamspear. Arnest Er... Erring Faye. Smart Wayne. Even sing. <laughs> my PSP was silver. It died years ago. Oh, dang. Yeah, I had to get a new battery for my PSP because when I found, um, when I unpacked it again, the battery was like all bloated and fat, and I was like, "Oh no, it's gonna explode!" Thankfully, I found um, another battery. But uh, to finish all of my PSP games that I haven't finished or started playing, I have to charge my PSP. Really? Anyway, I must pick up my things again now, so I'm ready to be discharged. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry to take up your time when you're obviously busy. No, 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 sorry, sorry, blah, blah, blah. No, I saw this, I saw this, yeah, sorry. Give it! I bought my PSP mainly for Persona 1, 2, 3 and Valkyria Chronicles 2, totally worth it. Um, why did I buy my PSP? I... I bought it for Dissidia. Because I was like, man, the city is not going to come out in America. I need to buy the Japanese version. And then I was like, wait, Japanese consoles have a lot, a lot of prettier colors. So let's just get a Japanese PSP. Wait, why can't I examine this painting? Gosh darn it. Yeah. Oh, pretty. I had, I had fun playing the city. Yeah. Whose bed is this? Ah, huh, this is like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital then. 
Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. Um, ooh, this is important. Never got one? Oh. Uh, hmm. I mean, there weren't. You're not really missing out, I guess? Um. Wait. Uh. Shoot. Can't show my collection of PSP games because my um, game cartridge holder isn't out, but the games I definitely had for my PSP were Dissidia, Dissidia, the next one, 012, um, uh, Valkyrie Profile, Lenith, when they remade it for PSP, uh, Crisis Core, uh, there was one called Crimson Gem Saga that I still haven't started yet. Whoopsies. And uh, was was Patapon for PSP? Yeah, I think I had Patapon for PSP. One, two, three. Um. Hmm. Did I get Final Fantasy one and two for PSP? No, I borrowed some. No, yeah, I did. Yeah, I have that. And I think. No, I don't have the Final Fantasy IV, or, or do I do? I think I bought every single version of Final Fantasy IV there could possibly be. Love Final Fantasy IV. Omori is a Steam game. That Regal is trying to get me to play. There are all sorts of medicine in this cabinet, look. I'm not sure if it's safe leaving them in reach of everyone like this. Yes, you're right. I can imagine if you were peckish, you might try a whole bottle or two. Well, at least there seems to be a little lock to secure the cabinet doors. I don't imagine that would stop you if you were hungry. I worry that you'd break the lock. Hunger doesn't turn me into a criminal, you know, Mrs. Sato. Uh, I think that's all I can... I'd marry for a PSP. Is that wrong? Don't answer. I mean, I hope they can offer more than a PSP. Okay, I think I gotta move now. But where to? Um. Oh? It's also on Switch. Oh, is it? Mm, nope, that thing. No conversations, so we're not supposed to be here. Conversation. Oh, Mr. Natsume is back. So he is. Mr. Natsume, hello. I think I need to trim my bangs soon. I'm getting weird. I, I am a cat. Sorry. I don't know who Mr. Natsume is or Herlock Sholmes. I don't know about courts or trials or old bailies. I am a cat. That's what I am. Just a cat. It's not a photo. He's trying to escape from reality. Trying to? He already has. Completely. So, um, what is your name, then? As yet, I have no name. It's not a photo. He hasn't fully thought of his new identity yet. Maybe it's not too late to bring him back to reality. Do you think you could open your eyes for us, Mr. Natsume? Ah. I am not a cat. It worked! He's back in the real world! What's going to become of me? No! I wonder if he's gonna make any farming games in the future. Who? Omo Cat? I was going to buy one, but I waited. Uh... And then, like, probably the Vita came out or something. I freaking love my Vita. Ugh, oh, Vita's the best. Don't answer that! It's obvious! My accursed soul is never going to escape this accursed fate. It's not some no! This morning's proceedings in court prove that there's hope. Yes, yes. Locum student Mr. Nanhoto Esquire was brilliant, but... But... The Reaper is omnipresent, in court, in my lodgings. Here, there, 
everywhere! What's he looking straight at me for? I think perhaps there are some things we should discuss? Oh, yes. Yes, we must. You made me do this, I'll do it. Do what? Marry for a PSP? Ooh, a date with Sephiroth or Bill Murray. Oh, mother flipping no. Uh, no. No. Th Both are terrible. Sephiroth because he's lame and stupid. But Bill Murray is gross. Ugh, none, none, thank you. Or give me your PSP. <laughs> What's your problem with Bill Murray? I, I don't know. He just, just something about him seems so like. I'm sure he's a nice person, like. But just when I see him in movies, he just looks, I don't, like sloppy and like, mm, like, I don't know, gross. I I, sorry, but I'm sure everyone has that one person that they're just like, oh no, I don't, I don't like them. He's super old now. Yeah, I know. Oh, sorry. Itchy eye. In my whole life, have I ever been so, so moved as I was today? No. Of course, if I cast my mind back, there were perhaps one or two other occasions that moved me more. But if I just block those out, then today, being in that courtroom was, was... It was the most moving experience of my life, welcome student Mr. Nadohoto Esquire! You're too kind. Not only are found a remaining tea, just as we deduced, and are analyzing it as we speak. There's nothing wrong with that tea! They won't find a drop of poison in it! That's a... Solemn, sworn, Soseki certainty! Tell me, did you both drink the tea at the same time that night? Obviously not! Oh. Oh yes, most definitely. Remember, drink tea while it's hot. But he left most of his tea to make the medallions, to the coins. We both poured it down our throats like it was a hot bath for our bellies. At the time, we were both completely fine. As shown by the fact that he and Mr. Shamspear then engaged in the Romeo and Juliet match. I suppose the focus of tomorrow's proceedings will be how the poison was taken by the victim then. Mr. Shamspear. That rotten Shamspear! What have I ever done to him? You don't recall I'm taking issue with you over anything you've done recently? I've been holed up in my room, immersed in books. I don't recall anything. Anything at all! Right. But what I don't understand is why he didn't let me know sooner. Let you know what, Mr. Natsume? About the soap, of course. What else? Oh dear. Are you struggling with such a meager stipend? Of course I am. If I had money, I wouldn't have chosen to live in an accursed existence in such accursed lodgings. Oh yes, you said it's because the place is cursed that it's so cheap, didn't you? Exactly. Especially the room that I rent. The spirit of that capital offender who lived there still haunts the place, and is trying to kill me. Capital offender? Might I ask, welcome student, not Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, that the next time you visit me... Bring scores of super soft soaps. <laughs> I don't think you want soap in jail, though. Or maybe you do. Okay. Uh, what about Bob? Turn horror for the last part of the movie. What's Bob turn horror? Sorry. <laughs> present you with anything? What if I present you to soap now? Mr. Natsman, what do you know about this? Ah, oh, there it is! That lathery lowlife that took my neighbor's life and sent me sliding to the depths of despair. 
slippery, sickly, psychotic saboteur. You've really gone off soap, haven't you? Absolutely, and I've made up my mind. The next time someone gives you soap as a present, it's... Friendship finished firmly forever! Billy Goose. I don't know that we can blame soap for everything that's happened, Mr. Nazima. Not Bob, Ben, Bad Ben. That sounds... That sounds familiar, but I don't know why. I don't know what that is. Am I... What am I supposed to do? Am Spears' room? I don't think there's anything else I can do in there. I'm gonna make sure I got absolutely everything on the table. Costumes, no. Hat, no. Window, no. Baby steps. Or I can consult a walkthrough. I think in Miss Green, this set. I don't think Sholmes is gonna be useful for this case. Garrida? Mr. Garrida appears to be out. Hmm, oh well. I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. Why do we have to come back later? To be fair, Sholmes is never useful in any case. That's true. Um, okay. Walk through time. I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, um... <sighs> Guess what I had to do! <laughs> I had to go to Sholmes! Rina and Sissy, hooray, you're back! Hello, Iris. You're in fine spirits as always, I see. I am, and you look as immaculately presented as ever, Sissy. Oh, you flatter me. Well, you couldn't have come at a better time. I've just made a pot of tea. I'll set some cups. Really? Thanks, Iris. But actually, what is that foul smell? Aha! The Wanderers return at last! Where on earth have the pair of you been? Um, we've been in court? Oh, for Mr. Mustache's case. Not well, today, was it? I'm sure I mentioned it only yesterday, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure you think you did. <laughs> well, we can laugh about it now. Oh my gosh, and the pipe he uses turns into a... A Japanese pipe, that's awesome. <clears throat> I used to have a fake pipe when I was younger. It didn't work, it was just like, oh, it's like a souvenir from a castle. But it was cool. So tell me, how did the trial go? Reasonably well so far. We've managed to escape without a guilty verdict at least. Really? I've, I would have liked to see it. And I must pass the time of day with Mr. Reaper again. It's been too long. Lord Van Zeek's an acquaintance, Mr. Sholmes? Naturally. There's not a person in the world who doesn't know my name, Mr. Nandahudu. Not quite what I asked, but still. Mr. Sholmes. Whatever is that odor? Yes, what is it? It's faint, but absolutely awful. Ah, indeed. That's the scent of victory, my dear fellows. Victory in science. Oh dear. All right, I'll bite. Let's see up to now. Converse with Sholmes. Lord Baruch von Zeeps. Yes, it's an interesting sobriquet he has, isn't it? The Reaper of the Valley. Once the legendary prosecutor had fought for someone's conviction, that person is doomed. Even if he or she is found not guilty by the courts, Sooner or later, the hapless soul will vanish from the capital. From the capital. But vanish how exactly? By falling under a passing carriage or drowning in the Thames. Succumbing to a sudden fever, or quite out of the blue, being set upon by a highwayman. The numerous routes to one's final terminus, my dear fellow. It all seems a little far-fetched, really. 
Well, on the bright side, Mr. Mustache is fighting fit. For the time being, at least. That's not overly reassuring. If the rumors are true, though, the obvious conclusion would surely be that those acquitted are, well, by Lord Van Zeke's own hand. As it happens, Mr. Soto, that is quite impossible. Huh? Why? Naturally, the man very quickly came under such suspicion. However, whenever these incidents occurred, the Reaper always had a cast iron alibi. Really? And so his reign continued. But five years ago, he vanished from the courts, never to appear as a prosecutor again. That is, until you arrived in the country, Mr. Nadahodo. Yes, so I've heard. In fact, it was the very day I arrived when I was thrust into that trial at the Old Bailey. That bitter fight to the death coincided with the Reaper's resurrection. It really did end bitterly indeed. And here you are, facing Mr. Reaper again. Well, oh, Reno, I don't know if you're just incredibly unlucky. Or incredibly unlikable. I think it goes deeper than just me. I sense a general loathing. All Japanese people. Cause he's a racist! Foul smell Japanese people. So, what is that indescribably foul smell? Ah, well, most probably this, I would say. What is that? My dear fellow, it is, of course, my latest invention. A chemical test that can identify whether or not a tea is genuine at the drop of some tea. Oh my! There are some unscrupulous sorts manning the stalls along some of London's less frequented streets. They regularly sell what purports to be high quality tea, but is in, ma in fact merely dyed leaves of drab flavour. Well, that's certainly unsavoury behaviour. So, when one is presented with what appears to be black tea, one must be careful. Iris? Oh my gosh, is his thing going to come into play too? For the tea? At the ready, Hurley. Let us add a drop of my chemical to this cup of tea here. You see what happens. Oh, it turned black. It's turned completely black. And what a foul odor it's giving off. Indeed, the blacker the tea becomes, and the more foul the odor, the better the tea is. It would appear that this cup was a particularly fine Darjili. That's very ingenious. But what do you do with that black liquid now? Why, dispose of it naturally. Surely you wouldn't like to drink it, would you? There does seem to be a rather obvious problem with your new invention, Mr. Sholmes. Hence why this chemical test is merely a test, my dear madam. Right. The point is, we are entering a new era of science. In the world of criminal investigation, also. Yes, forensic science. Oh, these are such exciting times. I regularly engage into scientific experimentation alongside my unofficial consulting detective work. The Herlock Storms method will be the foundation upon which modern investigative technique is based. This little tea indicant was a happy byproduct of my ongoing forensic science research. Forensic science? I suppose I should find out more about that. Ah! I'll do Japanese people first. With Mr. Natsume, who I'm currently defending, being Japanese as well as Ms. Susato and myself, I felt it even more keenly in court today. For some reason, Lord Van Seek seems to have an inherent disdain of the Japanese. Indeed. It's an interesting observation. Do you know something about it? Do you, Mr. Scholz? It was uh, ten years ago that Baron von Zeke's Barak von Zeeks chose to enter the legal profession. However, before that time, the young man's closest companion hailed from the Empire of Japan. No! What the? Tell us more, Mr. Sholmes! What happens? I believe I've made it clear before. I'm unable to tell you anything about the affair. Oh, but...
The veil will be lifted on the events of the past in due course, I have no doubt. For now, however, it is Mr. Mustache who must des uh, who is most deserving of your attention, I believe. Really? That's all you're gonna say? Who cheated on who, right? I'm think- like, it's- Was Van Zeeks's like, Japanese friend a girl that he was in love with, but she's just like, I gotta go back to Japan, bye! What the heck? You're just gonna leave us hanging like this? Wow. Forensic science. So, your tea test. Is that an example of forensic science? Indeed it is. An essential tool in cases that hinge on the knowledge of whether some tea is of high or inferior quality. Not a huge number of cases, then. Perhaps a more practical example is required. The prince? Not yet accepted in a court as evidence, I might add. Really, we are dragging our heels here. I hadn't even heard of them until recently. I have a question for you regarding chat. What is it? Which is particularly why I undertake research in this field myself. Uh, of course. Does that mean you're studying fingerprints, Mr. Schultz? There are others in that field already, and I abhor the company of inferior minds. No, what I am researching is skin prints. I think whenever someone joins in, um, there's a message, welcome to the chat room, and it's just a constant spam. Can you turn that off? Yes, I'm real. Um, that's weird. What is that? Hmm. Let's... How to fix that. So... I didn't know, like, that was a thing. Settings. Show mod icons, show moderation action, show messages caught by auto mod, allow new chatter introductions. What does that mean? Deleted messages brief. First time chat highlight. Default pause chat scroll only. Emotes only chat. Subscribers only chat. Followers only chat. Slow mode. Tasks. Manage by the Maybe it's this allow new chatter introductions. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try sending a message. Blah! And hopefully that- the message- did it pop up? I hope that fixed it. Skin prints! <laughs> Skin prints? A nomenclature of my own design. As is this chemical agent that makes it possible. It instantly reveals objects touched by whichever person is under investigation. Brilliant, Mr. Scholes. As long as it doesn't turn everything completely odorous and black. I assure you, my dear fellows. You will witness my forensic talents in action very soon indeed. Well, I think we should go back to the scene and see if we can uncover any new clues. That's the spirit, Runo! See you later! Yes, until later. No, no, Mr. Sholmes, we were thinking you'd come with us. You were? Yes, of course! You said so just a moment ago! You said we'd witness your forensic talents in action. Ah, oh, yes, I do recall saying something along those lines. But you go on ahead. I should be sure to follow you later, in all likelihood. Probably. Maybe. Well, I might. Your commitment astounds me. Well, thank you, Mr. Scholz. We'll eagerly await your arrival. Bye bye, Runo. Bye, Susie. Okay, so I guess I have to go back. To... Hmm. Oh my word, he's here already. Hi. Oh, I got him right on his butt. Mr. Sholmes, what are you up to over there? What a question indeed. Was not your good self who asked me to attend the scene? Oi! What are you doing here, Sholmes? What are you up to over there? What are you doing here? Hear me. One's a great detective. One is always under scrutiny, it seems. Is now the time, Mr. Sholmes? Are you about to show us? Your forensic talents in action as you promised? 
Whoa, he's not wearing a shirt. Well, he is, but it's like very open. I did not notice that before. Holy wow, I can see his chest. Whoa! <laughs> but the grace is a pleasure, my dear madam. Oh my gosh, why wasn't there a sort of shirtless Azogi outfit? JT, behave yourself. Oh my gosh, but it's it's a chest, man. And that fox mask, damn it, it looks kind of cute on him. What's all this? All this is precisely what you requested, Mr. Nadahodo. Herlock Sholm's essential, sensational skin print seeker gun. Moments ago, I took a sample from the teacup that was used by the victim. A sample from Mr. Shamspear's cup? Each individual leaves microscopic secretions on everything he or she touches. A sample of those secretions is all I need to produce this, a refined indicator solution. By liberally spraying the room with this chemical, everything the victim touched is instantly revealed with the aid of these goggles. Here, try them on. Oh good, he's gonna kill someone. <laughs> no! Well, maybe. He'll kill them with science. And knowledge. Here, now spray the chemical indicator all about and all will be revealed. Spray? How do I do that exactly? A little press of A on the area you're interested in is all that's required. Like this. Ah, what is that stuff? It's like a fog. A suspension of the chemical indicator is in, in a pressurized gas. It's the most efficient way to cover a large area. That was another invention I discovered incidentally while I was, whilst I was developing this idea. As you do. Go ahead, try it, my dear fellow. You may learn something interesting about the victim's movements on the night in question. Oh, well, there's nothing to lose, I suppose. Let's explore. Uh, first of all, do this. He didn't touch it. Oh, okay. All over the window. Oh, I guess it takes time for it to, like, charge. Okay, seriously, not in the envelope. Why did they just all of a sudden cut? That's stupid. There's nothing to lose except our sanity. Ha <laughs> ha, so true. So true. Look, there's a dozen of handprints here. So there are a great many indeed. So much so that it's hard to make out any one individual print in fact. Brr, there's a chill down my spine. Perhaps he was leaning against the wall while he admired his picture? Unlikely, I would say. It's a rather dull scene after all. And without wishing to state the obvious, you wouldn't generally admire a picture from such close quarters, I feel. Oh, very true, Mr. Soto. Bit of a mystery, then. Looks like someone was taking it from behind. That's what I was thinking! <laughs> ah, it's a terrible thought! Okay, no, seriously, there's nothing on the envelope? I guess now would be the time to just examine the wall. Yeah, because nothing else is showing up. Oh no! I have to keep going. There's something I missed. Because they're not letting me escape the scene. Uh... Am I supposed to see? Oh my gosh! Why do they do that? Oh, look at all this here! Ah yes, interesting. A multitude of the victim's handprints. Why are there so many of them on the floor in this one spot? Oh, perhaps he had a bad fall just here? Nothing obvious that he would have tripped over though, is there? Hmm, I wonder... Personally, I often stumble when there's nothing obvious to trip over. I think that's something only a great detective would do, Mr. Jones. Well, this is quite a puzzle. Handprints all over the floor. Yes, there's no obvious explanation. Yes, there is. That floorboard he moved around a lot, so pry it out. I would have laughed if there's a handprint on the crotchety underwear. <laughs> that would have been funny. 
Well, we sprayed Mr. Sholm's amazing skin print indicator all over this room, didn't we? We did, but there are two places in particular that are of interest, I would say. The handprints on the floor there. And on the wall by the picture, you mean. Yes, and I think the floor warrants closer investigation. I won't be a moment. Ah! What is it, Mr. Sato? Look here, Mr. Nanakuro. One of the floorboards has popped out. One of the... You mean... It's a secret hiding place. You don't say. Excellent work, Ms. Susato. So, what do we have in here? Oi! What are you lot doing? Dr. Gregson? Stand aside right this minute. It's my job to investigate there. You don't even know about it. No need, Inspector. You continue to dig into your portion of chips whilst we dig around under the floor here. Your fancy talk's putting me off my food anyway, Sholmes. A new bit of evidence is exactly what I need. No, get away! I found it! Wow, a secret hiding place under the floor. What a find! Not a hiding place you could make use of in Japan. I don't think I could lift a straw tatami mat. No, I know. But I never ex here expected one of these wooden floorboards to move either. It's got me wondering about the wall over there, too. Aren't you curious? Oh! I'll investigate at once! There's nothing behind the picture, sadly. Only the wall. Hmm. How disappointing. But then, how do you explain the handprints? I really can't think why anyone would have been touching the wall over and over in a place like that. Whoa. A wall, highly suspicious. Or maybe it's the painting itself? Traces of handprints on a wall discovered using the skin print seeker gun. There are multiple prints on either side of the hanging picture. Are the handprints also over the picture frame? Oh, thank you very much. His invention can make prints too. Let me examine that. Okay, so they're over the frame also. And it's not touching the gas lamps. It's not touching the pipe. What? What is that? Nothing to do with the picture or the picture. It was? No. Completely useless. Interesting. Weird. Now then. I wonder if Inspector Gregson has found anything under the floor there. I'm desperate to know. So am I. Yes, inspect Gregson. I'd love to know if there's anything hidden underneath that floorboard there. Allow me to ask Gregson now. After all, we're well acquainted. Inspector Gregson! Really, it's been too long! What is it, Sholmes? I thought perhaps you might show me what you found there. Seeing as we're such good friends. But not friends. No, I suppose not. Lure him away with Iris. A dismal failure. Yes, I heard. Oh, I killed to know what was under that floorboard. All right then, fair's fair. What? You did discover the hiding place after all. Suppose I should at least fill you in. Really, Inspector? Thank you. Do it quickly, my dear fellow. There's one thing I know about this man. It's that he blows with the wind, as fickle as the weather. Boy, stop making me out to be some kind of knock. There are three items under the floor there. A newspaper clipping, a photograph of print, and a tin box. Now, what do you want to know? About all of them. Looks like it was cut out from the paper about three months ago. It's about a convict who got sick and died while he was serving time up in Manchester. 
How terrible. Made the headlines down here in London as well. The bloke had been sentenced to death, you see. But nature got to him first. What do you say? A photo of Prince? <laughs> oh my goodness, he committed a capital offense? Man by the name of Seldon. That's the piece of work. Into burglary is a murder. They say the hoard he knocked off was about a thousand pounds. Wow, back then that's a lot. Hoard? Of treasure, you mean? Jewelry and the like. But he hid in it somewhere and no one knows where. Now he's dead. The papers loved it, of course. A thousand pounds are lost en route to hell, or some or some such was the headline. Doesn't that strike you though? Why such an article would be so carefully ensconced under the floor? I suppose now you mention it, it does seem a bit odd. Perhaps I'll go over the paperwork we've got on Selden back at the yard and see if I can turn up any turn anything up. Capital Offender article has been entered into court record. I'll read it after I do the other two. Oh my gosh, it's the painter and Garadab. So, this is the photograph I found. Looks reasonably recent to me. Yeah, so it appeared to have been taken on the street in front of the house here. And the gentleman on the left is Mr. Garadab, the landlord, of course. But who's the young man on the right? Mr. Garadab's son, perhaps? Perhaps. You can take that print with you if you like. Really? Are you sure? You can presume, therefore, that the yard already knows. The identity of the young fellow, that is. Ah, is that true? Hm. Well, it's too bad if we do. Unfortunately for you lot, leaking information isn't one of my pastimes. My dear Inspector, if I may be so bold as to point something out. Pastimes are for one's leisure, but this is for work. Leisure. Who is this man? All the more reason I'm not telling you. A dismal failure. Yes, I heard. Hidden photo. Well, that just means we go to the hospital and we ask Miss Green who he is. I wonder why a photograph like this was hidden under the floor. I mean, Mr. Shamsbury himself isn't in it. Photographic pins are still rare treasures in the East End. I imagine Mr. Garrida was rather delighted to have been immortalized. He probably made a proud present of it. Tin box. Now this tin box looks interesting, doesn't it? Might I suggest, Inspector? Would you open it? If you were to find something inside that reveals the truth behind this case, I wouldn't be in the least surprised. Yeah, funnily enough, I've already had a look. It's completely empty. What? Shamspear! Give us a clue, man! We didn't even have the chance to utter a word, Mr. Nadahodo. But anyway, at least we found out what's inside the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Yes, thin air. It's empty. Rather like how I feel inside. Is there nothing more to this box then? I wonder. No, still give it to me for evidence, please. <gasps> Wagahai! Hmm, so it connects. So something's behind that. Oh, look! It's that lovely little kitty cat. What was its name? It's Mr. Natsumez, isn't it? I don't think we ever asked him, actually. Why don't we call it, um, Wakahai? You know, like Mr. Natsume refers to himself in Japanese. I wonder how he got in here. Clever cat. <laughs> A dog? No, it's a cat, silly! Oh, wonderful. Well then, Wakahai. Here's something delicious I brought for you from the cat's meat man. Maybe the old man was cheating? Ew. <laughs> Ew. How dare he? And he says he's a loyal man who doesn't cheat, who's a one woman's man. How dare you? He couldn't look happier now. Look. I just hope we can bring some happiness to his owner too. I guess we examine Wagahai now. 
Uh, you're in real life friends with uh, Maka, right? Yes. That was a cheeky little meow, Wakahai. Oh, but he's so adorable. I could sit and watch him forever. I think he may not appreciate that after a while. We have an investigation to get back to. Okay, that was useless. Um, can't examine where he. What was the point of that? Text if you should play Omri, guaranteed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he even heard of Omori. The cat is probably gonna scratch at the painting or something. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I should take a look at the photograph now and the newspaper clipping. Condemned criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester Strangeways Prison announced the deaths of. The death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in the early hours this morning. He had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. Okay, so this doesn't have a back and it's legit just his face. Hmm. Is there no point to having Wakahai here? Walk through. Forensic science Shamspear's room. Um uh, look after Okay, I have to go to the prison. And I guess after prison I'll go to um Wait, uh Oh, okay, so I present the newspaper clipping to him. It's this... It's a newspaper cutting that we found in Mr. Shamspear's room. Oh, so he knew, did he? Sorry? About this man, Selden. Convict killer, convicted killer, and the evil spirit behind the curse that afflicts my lodgings! Oh, so Shamspear is thinking that the jewels that Selden took are somewhere in that building. Posty jail. No, I don't want to be in jail. He's already taken one young man's life, and now he's trying to take the life of another. A miserable mustache, mustard lined Japanese man. Mr. Nazima, if you know something, please, you must tell us. Tell us everything you can about this evil spirit. Posty prison. No, I am not in prison. The truth is, I didn't know the details myself until very recently. That Selden man was arrested about a year ago now. And at the time, he was hiding out in lodgings at Mr. Garadev's house. What? He lived where you do now? That's right, yes. Exactly where I live now. In my very room. Oh my! Your room was previously occupied by a criminal found guilty of a capital offense? But before his sentence could be carried out, he died in prison. That was three months ago now. And that's when it started. The c -c curse What really is this curse you keep mentioning, Mr. Natsume? It's already cost one death. A few months after the criminal passed away in prison, a man died in the room. A man who rented it after Selden, in fact. The poor lodger. He... he was found dead in mysterious circumstances. The room was locked from the inside. Locked from the inside? Exactly like the case we're dealing with now. So that's the convict's curse, is it? Oh, maybe the dude in the picture is the guy who died. Ooh. Yes, well, that was the start of it. Convict's curse. Do you have any idea how to lodge her before you passed away, Mr. Natsume? The official cause of death was asphyxia. 
When they discovered the body, the room was full of gas. Gas? I only found that out after I'd signed the lease. When Mr. Garadub came to tell me later, I couldn't stop myself trembling. In fact, if I'd known beforehand, I'd probably have been too scared to take the room. Landlord's lease luckily legal! Lucky for Mr. Garda, maybe, but not so lucky for poor Mr. Natsume. And now you believe this curse is affecting you? It is, it is! At first, I just felt as though I was being watched. All the time. And then you talked about having nightmares, didn't you? The, the dead are tr trying to take me with them. They c come for me and try to suffocate me, I think? When he's talking about people watching him and suffocating him, I think it's just a cat. The cat, like, can, like, move around in the walls, and the cat is just lying down on top of him when he's sleeping. Just when I'm struggling to breathe, I wake up, and the room is as cold as ice. But why is your room so cold? Suffocation, no breathing, I don't know the words. Uh, long winters. London winters are too cold to bear without any heating o on overnight. But for some reason, even though I light the stove before I climb into bed at night, the pilot light always goes out and the room fills with gas. But that's terrible. That's exactly the same situation as what led to the previous occupant's death. And then there's what happened to Mr. Shamspear last night when he was mysteriously poisoned. There's clearly more to that incident that can be explained by a curse. Whatever can the cause of all these strange happenings in Mr. Garadeb's rooms? That's why Shamspear was looking at, at Green's, um, whatchamacallit? At Green's painting. He wasn't looking at the painting, he was looking at the dude's, um, the dude's, um, picture. I'm gonna go to the hospital. Hello! Oh, I can't converse with her. I can't present. Can it? Okay. Oh, wait, let me look at my people, though. Did anyone new get added? Couldn't be Altamont. 38. He's only 23! Oh my gosh, he seems so old. Baron Von Zietz is... Barak. I don't know why I keep calling him Baron. Barak Von, Von Zietz. 32. Man, I'm older than him. That's crazy. Okay, well... Guess I'm going... Her dad? Because... They said we have to go back there later anyway. Okay, he's here. So, oh, you're here now, Mr. Garadub. Right, probably business is it for me, you know? Getting out and about. Are you at the old Bailey by any chance? Naturally. The fate of my lodgings hanging in the balance and all that. Not a trial to miss. The fate of what's already been dubbed by your haunted lodgings, yes. Of course, the place has caused a quite a stir around the capital on more than one occasion already. As the old haunted lodgings or some such. Ah, well, at least he knows. Makes you wonder what the place is going on, don't you know? Yes, I'm sure it does. In fact, thinking back to Mr. Natsuma's other trial just two days ago... You were at the Old Bailey then as well, weren't you? Just fine with your wife about what happened. Dropped off at prison on the way home, in fact. Beastly business. I see. So, what brings you to my haunted abode today, eh? That took a while to... Um, first of all, I really want to know about this picture! Mr. Garadub, could I ask you to look at this photograph? Is that your son who's with you there? No, no, not at all. There's a lodger here once. Duncan Ross was his name. Duncan Ross? A street photographer happened to be passing, so I asked him to take a shot, just for kicks, really. What can you tell me about the Reapers? <laughs> what? 
Was he by any chance the lodger before Mr. Natsume? Yes, that's right. Ah, the young gentleman who died in a room in mysterious circumstances. Just what Mr. Mustache was waiting for, one might say. Yes, young Dongdon lived in a room at the top of the first flight of stairs before that Japanese chap. Would you mind telling us a little more about him? Whoa! Before that, I want to ask about, um... Dongdon also. Present. Mr. Garadip, could I show you this? Nope! Wrong. Okay, so now I'm just supposed to talk to him. The lodger's death. Yes, Duncan Ross. Young chap was attending art school. Had to work to pay for it, mind. Moved into the middle floor about a year ago, after that criminal Seldon was arrested. Young students are always on the hunt for rooms with a history behind them. A history of cheap rent, maybe, yes. Yes, well, anyway. It was one morning about a month ago now. I couldn't quite work out the old trick of watching the gas lamps to see what my lodgers are up to at the time. So sadly, I was rather tardy to discover what had happened. Kind of gas that alerted me there was. Ah, oh, yes. Synonymous with the smell of death. Called the police straight away, of course, and the officer kicked the door off its hinges. But once we got inside, we all barely collapsed. Because the gas. Yes, room was full of it. No air at all. Stewart must have gone out while the poor chap was sleeping in his bed. Mr. Ross suffocated to death. Maybe that's why Wagaha is there, because he's like, Oh no, this dude died this way before, so now before it can like, get any colder, I'm gonna wake you up. Also, the police gave me a sound ticking off because gas pipes were so old and all that. Can't tell you how much it set me back to have the lot replaced all over the house. But even after you had all that work done, Mr. Natsuma says the same thing. That the stove goes out at night whilst he's asleep in bed. That's the Bally curse! The convict's curse! I've done my duty as landlord now! Someone's feeling defensive. Hey, you're logic. What can you tell me about her? <sighs> oh, my throat hurts. Wait. Sorry, I got a message. Ah! Okay. Nothing big, nothing big. Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor chap of questionable character, eh? Yes, the house does seem to have become something of a magnet for rum fellows of late. Thanks for that bally curse. The convict's curse, you mean? Ah, oh, heard the stories, have you? Rotten scoundrel was arrested here, the next chapter in the room goes and kills over. Then there was that woman who dropped dead just outside the street, not to mention the actor yesterday. Am I next day? Well, can't help but get the collywobbles, can you? When you say the woman who dropped dead outside on the streets, do you mean Miss Green? Because Miss Green, who was stabbed by the knife, and Mr. Shamspear, who was poisoned last night, are both very much alive still. Yes, well, so's that blasted convict's curse, it seems. Personally, I should be quite content with such lodgings. A bath, a toilet, a fireplace, a fascinating history. Why, it sounds like the lap of luxury. I'm not so sure about that. Well, no bath or toilet included, and no fireplace either. But you do look out for your tenants, don't you? By watching the rise and fall of the flames in your gas lamps up here. Yes, never hurts to keep an eye on things. In case there are any mishaps or such like. I think you've had your mishap already, sir. <laughs> That's not helpful, Mr. Sholmes. Heaven forgive me. The words just came out of my lips. Your lodgers. Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor show. Yeah, 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 I said that before. There's no need for that, Mr. Garadub. That's right. Mr. Natsume is no way fishy. Hmm. He is undeniably peculiar, however. Is it right that he took the vacancy immediately after the previous tenant passed away? Yes, that's right. I asked the estate agent to find someone as he popped 
and he popped up the very same day. Never come across. I can talk. Never come across a chap so keen for a place with a background, as it were. I don't think it was the room's background he was keen on so much as the cheap rent, actually. So, how long has Mr. Shakespeare been lodging under your roof? That failed, Doctor Chap. Hmm. Let me see. Oh, of course. This has been three months now. Quite sure of it. Only three months? It's quite new here, too, then. And to what do you owe your certainty in that regard, Mr. Gerda, if my eye may ask? I don't remember. Well, it was that Selden scoundrel, as it happens. Selden? The convict, you mean? Do Selden and Shamspear have some kind of connection, then? Shamspear's tenancy. A convict chap, Selden. Passed away in the clink of three months. I think three months ago now, you see. Some malady or other. Yes, we've seen the report from the newspaper at the time. Well, it was only three days later that the tra tragedian... Sh tragedian? Showed his face. The actor fellow. Really? Yes, I remember it quite distinctly. Be small, this will be a habit. Pretty landlord, hear my request. I, the humble Shamspear, do desire to take that room and the mail throw off whatever for what. Yeah, he was looking for the jewels. He's trying to do something shady to get Soulsucky out of there. You, you're so shady. I don't have to show you right now, but that won't be possible. Already have a lodger on the middle floor. Ground floor room's vacant though. Nothing can be made out of nothing. Let me repeat mine well unto thee. Those curls might be in my room here. The room on the middle floor is taken. It's ground floor or nothing. Very well, we have an accord. Not to hear it. Welcome to the Briar Road. No, a Shamspear dance to celebrate. What a weirdo. What I heard in the court today. Sounds like the chap was thieving gas. He was three months in the rears with the rent, too. Yes, the fellow was a ballet player, all right. Thank you for your counsel, Mr. Garadab. We are most grateful. By way of appreciation, allow me to say one or two words. Give me my robe, put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. What? What's happened to you? Shakespeare, my dear fellow. One of his most famous lines. Thank you for this chest shot. <laughs> I wish to divulge my own learning of the subject. Oh, I have a turn for literature too, you know. Perhaps you could turn your attention to more apt lines then. Okay, so I guess we're done here. Ah, oh, that reminds me actually. Yes? About young Duncan, the night before the poor chap perished. He'd been writing a letter. A letter of affection to a young lady. A love letter, you mean? Yes. Where did I put it now? Ah, here it is. Left on my desk. If you'll excuse me. Let me see now. What does it say? To my most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Um, do you think that we should be reading such a personal piece of correspondence? My dear Miss Suzato, that's precisely why I prefaced my reading with, if you'll excuse me. I will not excuse you, Mr. Sholmes, no! Sadly, he did address it, though. Of no means of delivering the thing. Rather sad, really. I see. That's going to play on my mind. But it's not, because I know exactly who it's going to. Yes, read on, I know, right? Like, let's find out what's in the letter. But really, the identity of Mr. Ross's sweetheart has no bearing on the case. I think we should leave well- <gasps> Oh! It's pro- Okay, 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 okay. There's probably something hidden in Soseki's room that, um, that Shamspear is trying to find. But I feel like Duncan gave the key for whatever he hid or locked up to Olive. Dun dun dun! I think we should leave well alone. Yes, I suppose you're right. Indeed, the intended recipient's address is missing. However,. There is a name attributed to the man's most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Mr. Shaw, 
Holmes, please! I've already had to chastise you about this once. My undying love to you, my colorful darling, Olive Green. Ah! Uh, olive Green? The woman who was plunged into a coma after a knife plunged into her back outside this house five days ago! The victim of the last case Sosaki-san was in court for, who regained consciousness only yesterday! Is it just chance that her name has come up now? Could it possibly be a mere coincidence? I think not. Mr. Narahuro, whatever can this mean? Reading personal correspondence can have its merits, you see, Mr. Sato. Ah ha ha ha! Hi, I'm done with you. Let me leave! Now we go back to the hospital. Mr. Naruhoro, I've just spe finished speaking with the doctor. It seems Miss Green is well enough to be discharged at last. This is good news, but hopefully just before she leaves. Whoa, I missed it. Ah, okay, that was it. What is it? Maybe he is a good husband. I don't think they were husbands, though. Whoa, what are you doing? Miss Green! What was that? She clearly just hit something behind her back. One moment. I'll be with you in a jiffy. Oh, hello everyone. What are you all doing here? Doctor, I said I can be discharged, so I'm just getting my things together. Miss Green, what were you just doing? Oh, um, nothing, really. I was just about to take some medicine the doctor prescribed for me, that's all. Well, we were hoping to have another quick chat with you, if that's alright. No one can discharge around her. Is that a fat joke? That's not nice. I don't really have anything else to tell you. Alright, she is definitely behaving strangely. Let's see if we can't coax something out of her. Like with this! Miss Green, we were hoping to ask you about someone. Mr. Duncan Ross. You knew him, didn't you? Oh. Why is it pink? Takarupa! Oh no, I'm so sorry. The bottle of medicine fell down when she did. Oh, Miss Green, are you alright? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you like that. No, no, it's all right. This wasn't expecting it. But how do you know about Duncan? Mr. Ross has been writing a letter when he passed away. The landlord found it in his room. It was a very personal letter to you. I was at the art school. That's where I met Duncan. A year ago now. He was working to fund his studies. I dreamt of becoming a professional artist one day. And the two of you became romantically involved. Yes, that's right. We were very much in love. We were engaged to be married, actually. That's why I decided to move into a cheaper room to save money for the wedding. And that's what led him to Mr. Garadov's. Yes, he told me he found the worst but cheapest room in the entire East End. And then, a month ago, that's when it happens. He probably does not want uh, to risk losing his wife's PSP. <laughs> That's what he has hidden in the wall. We're so terribly sorry, Miss Green. Well, all in the past now, I suppose. Poor Miss Green. She looks desperately sad. I'm starting to think that's just her look. But now I see that she has every reason to feel the universe is against her. So now I could probably converse about more topics. No. Nope. It's wonderful news that you're going to be discharged, Miss Green. No. Oh. oh, excuse me. Yes, I mean, thank you. Once people are better, the hospital staff don't want them lingering in wasted space. Not people like me, anyway. Though I, I don't think I should keep waiting when waiting. 
She probably, probably shouldn't stand around and chat. She certainly doesn't seem to be in the mood to talk, that's for sure. Um, I do hope you won't think I'm being rude, but... Would you mind leaving me in peace now? I have to leave the hospital soon. Oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean to hold you up. Of course, we'll be on our way. Mr. Nero, Oh. Surely we're not about to leave. That's quite out of the question. But, Mr. Sholmes, I didn't realize you were here. But of course I was, my dear fellow. Watching intently from the shadows as always. Well, make your presence known next time. The rat is dead. Someone fed her poison. Mr. Sholmes, what's this about? Something which occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Sato, is this. Why do detectives insist on such an ex post facto modus operandi? Why solve a case after it's happened? Instead of preventing a case before it happens. That is what sets a great detective apart. What do you mean? There's a case waiting to happen under our very noses, Mr. Nadahodo. So let us avert disaster. Let us prevent this case from ever happening. With nothing but careful observation. Alright. All the clues you need are set before you. You need only look, and you cannot fail to see that there's a dead rat! You can do it, Mr. Nadahodo. I know you can. He's just like, what the F is happening? Hey, let's examine this dead rat! That mouse seems to be dead. Look! I didn't notice it there before, did you? I think perhaps it drank the medicine that spilled out of the bottle. But that's... The bottle that Miss Green was about to drink from when we arrived. You don't think... Ah, I see you've come to appreciate the true nature of the scene. That of a tragedy about to take place. Yes, I... I think it's falling into place. Miss Green, the contents of the bottle you had before has spilled down on the floor. And the poor mouse that drank it has sadly died. Oh. I think it's clear that the bottle must have contained a powerful poison. Were you trying to commit suicide, or...? Don't worry, I will attend to mouse presently. Test shot. Miss Green. Were you intending to go to the same... To go the same way as that rodent. Take your own life. Ah! Once we'd left, you would have put it to your lips again, wouldn't you? And taken the poison. I. I. No! Scream, please! Please talk to us! Can I examine the note too? It definitely feels as though this cart must be relevant. I mean, when we first arrived, the screen was standing with it in her hand. What can only be described as a very tense atmosphere. Sorry, I thought there was something in the corner of my eye, so I was like, what the freak? Yes, it may very well be related to whatever incident Mr. Shollins believes was about to happen here. Perhaps we should ask Miss Green about it. Okay. Now I think we can talk to her more. Yeah! Suicide on the card! Ten seconds later and we would have arrived at a very different scene here. In all probability, we would have not enjoyed this most delightful conversation. Of course, perhaps it hasn't been quite so delightful from your perspective, Miss Green. Actually, in a way... Now that everything's out in the open, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Tell me, how did you acquire that medicine? Well, with this being a hospital and all, when the doctor comes to examine me in the mornings, he always leaves the medicine cabinet open for a while, but it's not to sell when he wasn't looking. Conspic conspicuously, it lacks a label. I wonder what it contains. I'm afraid, I don't really know. But I thought, if I drank it, it might just stop the pain somehow. Oh, this that's sad. 
Oh, please, Miss Green. Don't talk of such things. Well, it seems clear now that it contains poison. Yes, that poor little mouse is proof of that. Oh, no. no. It's all my fault. What have I done? I shall remove this to my office, Miss Green. I take it you have no objection. No. None. Okay, so nobody gave it to her. She chose to do it. So Shamspear wasn't trying to poison her. But the card! Oh, the envelope! Wait, but the other end is in Shamspear's room. What's going on? Neither the sender's name nor address appears to be written on the envelope or the card. It arrived by post at my home the day before the incident that put me in the hospital here. Shamspear wanted her to, to go to the building. And she has the key. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Wait a minute. The 17th of this month? That's the day... That's the day you're stabbed on Briar Road. And... 5 p.m.? is precisely the time when the incident occurred. A slug and salad, yes. A pub on the northern corner of Briar Road. Briar Road being the street that Mr. Garadub's house is on. Does this mean that... Yes, I'm sure you've guessed. That day, when I was struck in the back by the knife. I was actually on my way to the slug and salad. Goodness. So that's what you were doing on Briar Road that day. Sorry I didn't say anything before. Now how would you have known? What? I think I really will have to ask you to excuse me now. I've told you everything. Yes, I'm very sorry to have had to drag up such painful memories for you. Yeah, it's fine. It's crazy that the second case of this game is so, like, crazy and elaborate and has to deal with the first game. Wow. Miss Green. Please, promise us you won't try to do anything like that again. Yes, don't worry. My detective friend has the bottle now anyway. And besides... I've been stabbed in the back. I had a close shave with a bottle of poison. I'm still here. I think... Listen to see things through to the end. It might sound a little conceited, but, well, that's how all this has made me feel. What kind of hospital has poison in a medicine cabinet? I know, for real! In the patient's room! No less, like, what the freak? This is a terrible hospital. Leaving Miss Green and St. Bartholomew's behind. We made our way back to Baker Street with Mr. Sholmes. Wait, did we get her letter in our evidence? Uh... Oh, shoot, I missed it. What was that? It would appear that we've reached the end of the investigative trail for today. No, I want to see... Uh, did I get... I didn't get the letter. But it's the perfect match to this! Wait! But why would it be... Did she get it unsealed? Like, was it already ripped? Because why would... Why would Shamspear rip the envelope if he wrote her the notes? Unless... So, he intercepted the letter and then he opened it and he was like, oh shoot, gotta give it... I don't know, I'm, I'm reaching. I should just... Just progress and see what happens, but... Oh, the mysteries! Like, what exactly is he after? What did Duncan leave behind? Why does she have a key? Uh, anyways. Yes, it's late. And, Mr. Nodho, did you discover anything that may be of use to you in court tomorrow, do you think? Details about Mr. Shamspear, Mr. Garadub's lodgings, the convict Selden. There are many facets to this case, and we've, we're yet to see the heart of it, if you ask me. That's my feeling, anyway. 
um, the old man and his wife did it again. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah, the first time the stabbing was the wife, this time it's gonna be the old man. <gasps> Trying to get to a PS5. <laughs> oh man, I, I want a PS5. Can't help wondering about the results of the analysis. Into Mr. Natsume's tea, you mean? Yes, will they have found strike me in it or not? Well, I fear that either way. It'll be hard to escape the grip of our friend, Mr. Reaper. Oh dear. Yes, Barrack Von Zeeks. But I wish you every success, of course. And though I was late to rise this morning... Tomorrow will be a new dawn. I intend to spring from my bed at a crisp hour and attend the trial. Mr. Sholmes, you're going to come? Indeed, whatever happens, I shall be there. Assuming my eyelids cooperate in the morning. What if the reason there are so many handprints on the wall in Shamspear's room is because Shamspear is listening for... for Natsume. Like, whenever he's out or something. Or whenever he's sleeping. Maybe the eyes that Natsume feels on him is not Wagahai, but it's Shamspear looking into his room. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I think we've done all we can. All that's left is to remain focused and keep fighting for Mr. Natsume's cause until the very end. London, the world's most prosperous city, home to some six million people. But away from the razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle, down the back alleys and behind bricked-up windows, the lonely lurk. Toseki-san had battled long and hard with loneliness during his many months here. And so I felt honor-bound to battle equally hard for my compatriot, to lift the curse that gripped him. As Mr. Sholmes said, tomorrow would be a new dawn. For all of us. He's putting his ears to the wall to hear the guy taking it from me. <laughs> Riedel, no! Okay. Okay, so we save this here. And I think this will, yeah, next time will be the trial. And hopefully we just finish everything then. But this is a crazy second case. It's so involved. Oh, man. Okay, well, that's going to be it for me tonight. And since I missed streaming yesterday, I'm going to try to stream tomorrow. And I should be able to if I'm not, like, super tired again. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.